Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. In this video, we are going to look at how to apply conditional formatting to pivot table data. And we're going to look at a couple of common problems that people encounter when they do this, because you certainly can do it. Now, I've got a reasonably basic pivot table on my screen, um, pivot table in the data from this sheet, which is formatted as a table. You can see as I click there, the design tab at the top for table tools. If you're not familiar what formatting as a table involves, I heavily encourage that you check that out. Uh, you're gonna see why I've done that in this example. But back to the pivot table for now, what I want to do is with conditional formatting, change the color automatically of any cell of a product category, such as beverages, condiments, etc., um, that is above £12,000. That's what I'm imagining is a good benchmark kind of quota. If you exceed that, if you've done good, anything else, then maybe we'll look at it. So I'm going to begin by highlighting the values. Now, I only want the categories, so I'm avoiding the totals here, the monthly totals. So I'm scrolling down, I'm holding down my control key every time I select so that I avoid the totals, just getting the values that I'm interested in, which is the sales for the product categories. I'll then go to my home tab, conditional formatting and apply my rule, which is any value greater than 12,000. And I'm going to go and pick a beautiful green. What's a beautiful green? That green there is a beautiful green. Let's click OK and click OK again. And here we go. Let's get rid of all that ugly gray, bluey stuff. Any value that exceeds 12,000 has turned to green. And let's imagine that that's really useful. That has just stepped up to the plate. That's great visualization. Um, but these are some of the problems I encounter. This obviously worked for now. But if this pivot table report was a recurring thing, then how will that work from this point onwards? Well, let's have a look. Let me go to my list of orders sheet and imagine that we've just placed a new order. So I'm going to put in a pretend ID and I'll put in a pretend date. Now, in this pivot table, you see it's for 2017 and it's going from Jan up to May because I'm currently in May at the time of recording this video. Let's imagine we've just sold something for June. So that's going to create this extra data. 5th of June, 2017. Uh, all this stuff can be the same. Yeah, it was that company. Yeah, that country. Yeah, that product. Don't even need this stuff, really. It can be condiments again. Let's imagine that this thing was £100 and that we sold uh, 200 of them. So that's calculated to 20,000 over here. Missing some of the formatting, but calculated to 20,000. Notice that the table has automatically expanded to accept the new row, which is why it was in the table, that dynamic range. Let's go back to my pivot table, and that is not shown, but that's because I haven't refreshed it. Let's click in my pivot, analyze tab, refresh that pivot table, and in comes the new data. Fantastic. This live report is updating quickly. However, my 20,000, which is above the criteria of 12,000, has not turned green like I hoped it would. And it's a typical issue with pivot tables, live data, and when you use conditional formatting, they're not picking up the new stuff. It kind of disappears, as some people would say. Now, this is all because of the way that I highlighted the ranges. And I didn't highlight them incorrectly. It wasn't a bad way what I did. It's just, it's different. Excel thought it was highlighting cells. It didn't realize I was talking about a pivot table. So if I click on my home tab, conditional formatting, manage the rules. I'm on a cell in the pivot right now. So immediately it's peers. Cell value greater than 12,000 green. And here is a very ugly look at that data, B5 to B12, then B14 to B21, then this, because that's how I highlighted it. But let me click on that rule and click edit above. 
and look at this stuff up here. How good is that? Excel knows I'm in a pivot table at some point. So although it's applied the cell ranges by default, I've got these couple of extras. Do I want to apply it to all the cells showing a total sales value? No, no, I don't. Because that would include the monthly totals. And this scenario, I do not want those. And that's another common pitfall for people. So there are two pitfalls. The way they highlight it, it may be using those values as well. Because they're all in column B here, aren't they? But I want all these sales values for a product category. Ignore the months, just the categories. And it's clever enough that even when I put that data in and it put in the June row and the condiments row, it would ignore the June row. It knows this. It understands this. The rest of the rule is the same. I click OK. I click OK. And now the condiments for 20 grand is done. And if I was to go back to list of orders, let's do a demonstration with a brand new month. It's the 10th of July now. June was not a very busy month. <laughs> I don't really need all this data. I'm going to ignore it. I'll put a category in. Let me put in beverages, something different. Um, uh, let me do something different here. This is 150 pound and I sold 180 of them. Uh, so it's 27 grand. That's over 12. That's good enough. Back, automatic expanded here. Back to the pivot table. Refresh. And look at that. Income two rows because it was a new month. It's left the row alone. But it's applied the conditional formatting automatically to new data for that category. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, tutorial. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. Come check us out at computergargar.com as well, where we have tons, tons of Excel tips, tricks, uh, videos and tutorials for you to uh, divulge at your leisure.